we pull out an old one there tonight. I like that old song. Most of the kids love that song. So I thought we'd do it tonight. Page 252 in your church hymnal, 252, The Lily of the Valley. Let's stand together, sing the first, second, and last of 252. tonight. Turn around, smile and wave, shake hands if you want to, if you're able, before you're seated as the pastor comes. Well, amen. That's good singing. Thank you, choir, for the good singing tonight. We appreciate it from the depths of our heart. Good to see you in the house of the Lord tonight. If you're visiting with us, if you're a first-time visitor, raise your hand. Let the ushers bring your card. Appreciate all of you being here. And then we want to pray for Master Clubs downstairs in the other building. Pray for the children and the workers there. And then let me remind you of Sunday school. Now Sunday at 10 o'clock. And don't forget to turn your clocks forward one hour Saturday night or whenever you get ready. And be ready for service Sunday. And then uh, we're going to have a special uh, Sunday night. The new sets are going to be here. That uh, bluegrass, bluegrass uh, singing group, those men, young men that stood here that night and blessed everybody, and everybody was uh, just uh, uh, elated at wh the way they sang and how they blessed our hearts. So they're going to be here on Sunday night coming. So you be here and tell your friends about it. The youth meeting is Friday night at 6.30, from 6.30 until 10.30, right here at the gym. And then let me remind you of our homecoming coming up pretty soon uh, for 55 years of our church. Uh, April the 22nd, we'll be meeting at City View over there where we came from in that church building at 7 o'clock on April the 22nd for a good memorial service. 
and then uh, we'll remember a lot of things, and we'll talk about that later. But then April the 24th, that'll be the following Sunday at 11 o'clock. We'll be here at 11 o'clock, one service, no Sunday school, no evening service, just one service that day. And, of course, the, uh, the Primitive Quartet will be our special guest on homecoming day on that Sunday. After the singing, be sure and bring your food now to church with you, put it in the gym, and after that singing, we'll go down and we will uh, have fellowship together and feast a while. Praise God. And then we want to pray for, this is a new request, Roy and Pearl Barrett. And we'll put those on the prayer list a little bit. We want to pray for Vicki Guy, Tony Moore, Jerry McMahon, Elizabeth Holcomb, Danny Burton, uh, Stan Edwards, Steve Wakefield, Jimmy McCall, Butch McCones, Hazel Thomas, Randy Key, Kristen Brown, Eunice Pridmore, Jimmy Thompson, Carol Center, Dan, Mayor Dan Kay, Ann Kay, Johnny Hembry, Nick Papala, Danny Black, Rita Cantrell, Brenda Alexander, Carol Black, uh, Carol Clark, for, I'm sorry, uh, Loretta Fowler, Roy Pettit, Kathy Pettit, Zelda Bishop, D. Hall, Sybil Kelly, David Swanger, Walter Brookshire, Scott Wakefield, Jack Thomas, Judy Moody, Heather McKinney, Louise Carlton, Catherine Davis, Eric Stevens, Sidney Clyman, and Jeremy and Jennifer Wakefield. Pray for all of these. All right, ushers, you come. We'll receive an offering for the sign, and I've got a $1,500 check here for the sign. $1,500 we'll be putting in tonight. We we'll appreciate the way people are giving toward that. It's going on up. We'll get it one of these days. Brother Jack, lead us in a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we grateful and thankful you allowed us another time to come back into your house and worship you. Father, we just ask that you come in and bless our service tonight in a very special way. Lord, we might be a little low on number, but Lord, we know that you're here with us, and we just ask that you continue to bless. Bless our pastor now as he comes to us in a few moments, and then bless Brother Sammy and the choir and the musicians, Father. Lord, for all those that are out, the ones that are sick, especially the ones that's on that prayer list, the ones that couldn't make it, Lord, we ask that you just bless them in a special way, touch them and lift them up, that they might get back into your house soon. And Father, what we're about to see now, we're going to thank you again and again for it, for we ask this little prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Well, praise the Lord. We've got a lot to praise Him for. What a great God we serve tonight. And if you will, I want you to take your Bible and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And this is on page 1215. 1215 in the Old Scofield Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 16. Paul said, Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. What a statement. What a statement from a man. For this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways. He says, follow me. T Timothy is going to tell you of my ways, my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Now, if that had been in the flesh, that would have been a man talking in pride. That would have been selfish pride. In other words, do what I say, follow me, go my way, do it my way. Then if, the, if a, a mere man had just said that, that wouldn't have gone over very well. But Paul was in the Spirit. The Spirit of God was giving him every word to say. And I want to say tonight, why should the church follow Paul? Are there any reasons why? We should really embrace this thought and really take it to heart. Well, we have heard a lot of things about the church, and we've been talking a lot about the church lately, and we'll be talking about it more in the days to come. But people talk about the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, and in our world today, most of the talk is negative, negative about the church. As a matter of fact, some people, they speak negative about their own church. They have some little something or something wrong they don't like about their own church, so they uh, talk about it and criticize it. Now, people have so many bad views that it's amazing of a church and of what it's here for. Many people don't even know what it is for. They don't go to church enough to even know what the church is about. There's a lot of folk don't know what it's about. Some people think it's just a building beside the road. Well, my friend, it's much more than that. And you and I have been studying that. We're studying in Revelation right now the seven churches of Asia Minor and the messages that Jesus gave to each one of those. So there is so much, so much that we need to remember and know about what Paul is talking about. And every church has its fault. Every local church has its faults. We're not talking about the inward man. We're talking about the organized church. You cannot find a local church on the earth anywhere, anytime, that is without fault. There's somebody in that church got a fault. And it may be the preacher. The preacher's got faults. Everybody's got faults. We don't agree on everything. We have our own opinions about things, have our own ideas. But I'm not concerned as much about the negativity as I am about the positive part of the church. Brother, I'm glad Paul was the man that loved the church. Everywhere he went, he preached Jesus Christ and establish churches for the glory of God. Now, why should I want to follow Paul? First of all, because of his great Savior. The Bible says over here in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, Paul said, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be the, made the righteousness of God in him. He was obedient. Jesus was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Think about this, the Prince of Glory, the God that made it all, and yet he humbled himself and died in your place and mine. No wonder Paul loved him. Paul was a mean man. He hated Jesus. He persecuted the church. He killed people, threw them in jail. He was a hell raiser. But when on the Damascus Road, he met him. And brother, after he met Jesus and got converted, he loved him. And from that day of his conversion till he died, he blazed the trail for the Lord Jesus Christ. He was not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. He preached it everywhere he went. So, my friend, I'm going to follow Paul because he's got the right Savior. He's got the one I got. I got the one he had. And I've got the one, praise God, that will be with me just like he was with Paul until we get home to glory. He loved us. The Lord Jesus loved the unlovely. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man die for his friends. So we didn't give Jesus Christ any reason at all to love us. We didn't do one thing to make him love us. We didn't have to. He loved us when we were unlovely. He loved us when we were unworthy. 
And he did not come to, we were spiritual paupers. It's what we really were. We were spiritual paupers, but he loved us, not because we were worthy, but he wanted to make us worthy. And he has made us worthy to stand before his Father one day in the glory world. Jesus included you and he included me in his great plan. And when he said, Lord, when he said, uh, whosoever, whosoever will, let him come and take of the water of life freely. When he said, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. When Jesus invited, he invited any sinner, every sinner from here to yon. Any sinner can come. Nobody has to leave this church tonight unsaved. Nobody has to leave this church tonight unhappy. Everybody in this church tonight can claim victory in Jesus. Everybody in this church tonight can leave here shouting and praising the name of the Lord down in your heart because He's real. He's the Savior. He died for you. He paid your debt in full. So my friend, wonderful, the grace of Jesus. Wouldn't you say amen to that? Amen. Greater than all my sin. How shall my tongue describe it? Try to describe the grace of God. Try to describe how you feel in your heart. I'm about ready to jump over this pulpit right now, and I haven't even got started good. But I feel the presence of His uh, Holy Spirit. Where shall our praise begin? I don't know where to start. But my friend, taking away my burden, that's one thing that I praise Him for. Setting my spirit free for the wonderful grace of Jesus reaches me. It reaches you. It reaches everyone that will receive Him. Brother, I, I'm telling you, when you think about being lost and undone, not even thinking about heaven or hell, not thinking about being saved or any of that, just going on your way straight to hell as you could go, and Jesus came to you. He came to me. He came to where we were. You didn't call Him. You didn't call Him up and say, Lord, I need help. Lord, come down and do something for me. He came uh, deliberately to you and to me and spoke to our heart and gave us the gospel, and we got born into his family by his amazing grace. Amazing grace. No wonder they keep singing that old hymn, because it is amazing. And so we, we find in Psalm 23, 1, the psalmist had it right when he said, The Lord is my, sa my shepherd. And so my God shall supply all your need, Paul said to the Philippian church, all your need according to his glory, riches and glory, but Christ Jesus. Now this church had been given. They had been given of their money, and a lot of them weren't wealthy, but they had gave anyway. They would given a lot. And some of them were really just about run out. But then the Holy Spirit told Paul, write to that church in Philippi, and tell them they may be getting low in their funds, but my God shall supply all your need according to His riches, His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So when you feel like you're about to go under, just remember there's somebody that's got a source that'll never run dry. The more you draw from it, the more it stays just like it is, and you can just keep on calling upon that source, and it'll never run dry. You know, I tell the story a lot. You've heard it. Back when I built that little cabin up in Marietta, years ago, 1978, and I had it up there in the woods, and I had a spring down there in the bottom of the hill there, and I was going to go down and clean that spring out, put a pump in it, and then pump the water up to the cabin there and uh, where I could get some good fresh water. Well, I was sitting in the drugstore with Dr. Ray Scruggs, the pastor of Bethany Baptist Church one day in uh, Marietta. We were sitting there drinking coffee and talking, and I was telling him about, I'm going to clean that spring out and fix it up. It's a good spring. And Ray said, why do that when you got water right there at your house? I said, what do you mean? He said, the water line comes right down to your corner, the corner of your state right there. It comes that far. I said, city water? He said, rural water or whatever? He said, yes. I said, man, I couldn't believe that. But I took old Ray at his word. I went up to the water company there in Marietta, and I said, uh, how far does that line come? They showed me, came right to my land, right to it. And you know what? I could have believed Ray or called him a liar. I could have said, oh, that, just, that can't be, that can't be. But you know what? I believed him. And then I found out it was true. 
And you know, after you find out it's true, the next thing to do is tap on. Tap on. So I had them to tap me in and run my water line all the way a thousand feet up in those woods to that cabin. And I had water. Just all you had to do was turn. I didn't have to clean the spring out. I didn't have to work. I didn't have to do any of that to get good fresh water. But brother, I had water until I sold the place. And it's still there. That water line is still there. But see, God's got a, God's got a water line right to your door. And you say, well, I just don't believe that. Well, do without. Or you can say, praise God, I believe what you're telling me. I believe the gospel. I believe I'll tap on. And when you tap on, you accept Jesus as your Savior. And when you accept Him, you're tapped on, brother. And the water flows. And He said, if any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And this spake He of the Holy Ghost, which everybody who believed would receive. Now, no wonder we can follow Paul, because Paul had that wonderful Savior that we're talking about. And then we follow Paul because of his great worship. In Philippians 3.3, 3, he said, For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit. We worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. I never put confidence in my flesh, and you better not put it in yours. You better worship in spirit and in truth. That's what the Lord said. And as we come together tonight, we do not bring a list of a, a group of obligations or suggestions or uh, the opinions that we have, and we're going to select out of that list ones we think are favorable, the ones we think would be something we ought to be really abide by or adhere to. We didn't do that tonight. You know what we did do? We came to church looking for this Bible to be open looking for the authoritative Word of God to be opened and to have something said from the Word of God. So we let the Bible be our guide. We don't let a list be our guide. I've been in things in my lifetime where you had to have a, a group of obligations in order to be right. You had to have a certain uh, ethic, uh, ethical standard to be right. And everybody's trying to make something out of something that was no good. It was rotten. But brother, let me tell you something. When we came to Jesus Christ, when we came to this Bible, it was the thing. It was the very thing we needed, and the Spirit of God gave us the power. The Spirit of God. The Bible says go. And when the Bible says go to a dedicated Christian, we go. The Bible says walk. We walk. And the Bible says win, and we witness. The Bible says feed, and we study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So Paul had the great Savior. He had the great worship, but then he also had the great message, and this is the message that I champion. I mean, I love it better than any verse in the Bible. Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Not maybe be, not hope to be, but shall be saved. If you call on the name of Jesus from your heart and you mean business, He saves you. Nothing else can be added or taken away. And somebody says, well, you don't know that. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, yes, I do. I've been told many times, well, Sammy, you can't know that you're saved until you die. I said, well, what's the use of even trying to live it then? If I'm not going to know till I die, I tell you what, you just go on with your doctrine and you believe that if you want to believe that. But I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded beyond, beyond a shadow of a doubt that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Who is the Lord to call upon? Jesus. God said he had had exalted him and given him a name above every name. And so he's the only name under heaven whereby we must be saved according to Acts 4.12. And so, my friend, he tells us and teaches us about an eternal hell, but we don't fear that hell because we can't go to that hell. I didn't say we might not go. I said we can't go. We just can't go. Why? Because we've been washed in the blood of the Lamb of God. And then he tells us about, we read about it, a life of fear, a life of confusion, a life of dread, a life of doubts. Many people have all of these things in their life. Paul told Timothy, he said, preach the word. 
Why, Paul? Why should I preach the Word? Because the preaching of the Word of God will take all dread out of your soul, will take all doubts out of your mind, and will take all fear away. And brother, fear hath torment. But when fear is gone, you are ready to shout. But you may not shout, because some of you are not going to shout till you get to heaven. I'm convinced of that. <laughs> Amen. Uh, I don't want to ruin this message <laughs> and make fun of somebody, but I'm going to tell you something. Uh, somebody looked like tonight they ate crab apples before they came to sing tonight. And I'll tell you, some of you didn't, some of you did. But listen, my friend, he'll get rid of all of that. And then he gets rid of the fear of hell. You don't even have to fear hell. You couldn't go to hell if you tried. Hey, glory, this is something great now. No wonder Paul was a fanatic, called a fanatic. No wonder they persecuted him. No wonder they wanted to kill the man. In Romans 10, 17, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Jesus said, Father, sanctify them through Thy truth. Thy Word is truth. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but My Word shall never pass. In 1 Peter 1, 23, being born again, another verse I hold on to all the time, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the Word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. In 1 Peter 1, 25, but the Word of the Lord endureth for a while, uh-uh, it endureth forever, forever. And this is the Word which by the Gospel is preached unto you. So then, why should we follow Paul? Why should we do things the way he did things? Because of that wonderful Savior, because of that wonderful worship, because of that wonderful message. But then what about that wonderful method? Over there he tells us that I determined to know nothing among you save Jesus and Him crucified. That didn't mean he was ignorant of everything else. It meant that that was the prime message he had, Jesus and Him crucified. There's no other better method of, of getting people to get saved. By the way, there's a lady called Monday from Brazil and said she was watching our service Sunday and gave her heart to Jesus from Brazil. And I said, you know, you never know where it's going. You know the project that we've given to going to Ukraine? Uh, a Monday, I didn't hear it today or yesterday, but as of Monday, there was 1.3 mi 1 million people that had actually heard the gospel message. And there were people calling saying they were saved, they got right with God. God's blessing and using that. When you and I get to heaven, that little bit we donated, you're going to see multitudes of people saved from Ukraine. You're going to see people saying, I, I would have never gotten saved if y'all hadn't uh, sent the message to me. Whew, I'm getting goosebumps all over me. The gospel gets the job done. And God's got a way of putting it out there, hallelujah. And it'll go places you wouldn't believe. I'm amazed. I'm amazed at it. That Grenada Bible thing is going big too, by the way. Oh, Brother Tom is doing a good job with that. And so we have the method that Paul used. And then, of course, the Bible does say in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Trust, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. To obey is better than sacrifice. Psalm 37, 5, Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in Him. Now, you can't be happy in Jesus if you don't trust Him. Just throw yourself on Him, and I promise you, listen, you may be up and down, in and out. And you may be happy one day and miserable the next day. You may fight a good uh, fight one day and almost lose the battle the next day. Up and down, up and down. And you don't know where you are and all the rest of it. But I'll tell you this, if you've ever, just remember, if you've ever trusted Jesus, He's going to take care of it all. Whew, glory. He's going to take care of everything. And when you get through, and when you get through with life here, you're going to find yourself on heaven's bright shore. You're going to find yourself there. That's a fact. And if I didn't believe that, I'd close this Bible and go home. I'd never open it again. But I know, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt. In Acts chapter 5, verse 29, old Peter said, and the other apostles, as much, and as much he said, as, uh, and we said, uh, he said to obey God rather than man. And that's what we have to do, to obey God rather than man. So, if we trust and obey, we will appreciate our call. We will begin to appreciate the preaching of the Word. Preachers are going to preach. 
and the church is going to pray, and the church and the teachers are going to teach, or they'll do all this like they've never done before. You get excited over Jesus, and everything you do from there on is going to be greater than it's ever been before in your lifetime. Go ye therefore, Jesus said in Matthew 28, 19, into all the world. Go ye and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. And then not only do we appreciate, but we sing. James 5, 13, any of you marry? Any of you marry? Sing, he said. Singing's all right. It's God ordained. God gave us music. God gave us singing. Man polluted it. God gave it. Music is really good. And then, uh-oh, I'm going to hit a snag here, y'all. We're going to have to get the scissors. We're going to have to take the scissors and cut this verse out. Throw it away. Independent Baptist, Southern Baptist, all the rest of that crowd. Here's what it says. Psalm 47, 1 and 2. Oh, clap your hands. Oh, that's getting, that's not the way we do things around here. Well, what does it mean to clap your hands? Huh? Is that clapping your hands? No. That looks like Nancy Pelosi. You know, he didn't say do a Nancy Pelosi. He said clap your hands. Now, I don't mean go around acting stupid, but that means glory to God when they hit a note and I say hallelujah. Glory. That's all right. That's all right. If you want to interpret it different than I do, well, that's okay, too. God understands. He understands y'all don't know everything. <laughs> he understands I don't either. But, and then it goes on and really gets deep. He says, shout. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Now, you know if those Ukrainians over there, if somehow they could win that war against Russia, you reckon any of them would get happy? You reckon any of them would even get loud? Some of them probably run up and down the street shouting. But that's not, and that's bad, that what, what's happening to them. And it'd be great if they could win that. And if our president, get, <clears throat> well, I better not get there, because I will ruin this sermon. But I want to tell you something, friend. I know what clout means, and I know what shout means, and I know what triumph means. That means when Jesus gives you the victory, it's all right for you to say hallelujah. You know, when they had that storm here a few weeks ago, and our lights went out for two days, and it was cold as ice, and I had to go down to the barn and get an old gas tank and put a heater on top of it to keep from freezing. And boy, I went to bed that night, and I was in the bed all covered up in the dark, and all of a sudden, the light came, the lights came on. I hollered. I jumped out. I said, glory to God. <laughs> there wasn't anybody in there to show off in front of. I wasn't trying to show anybody how I could shout. I was so happy that I was going to get some heat on. I was so happy the house was going to get warm until I had to praise the Lord. You say, you're just a nut. Amen, I am. <laughs> For the Lord Most High is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. My God's over it all. No wonder Paul loved him. No wonder we're to follow Paul. So there are places throughout the Word of God where God's people actually literally shouted out loud for victories that God gave them. Now, I can show you if I, I, I mean, I may someday just preach a sermon on shouting because there is a lot of shouting going on in God's Word. I can tell you that right now. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, and we're going to see here that there's going to be a special shout right here. For the Bible says, For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. There's going to be a meeting in the air one day, and all of God's people are going to be there, all of us. So our preaching, our praising, and our praying, and our teaching, our singing, our shouting, make up a method of serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul had that kind of method. And then, oh, Paul's weapons are enough to follow after, too. He said in 2 Corinthians 10, 4, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, not worldly, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds and casting down imaginations. 
and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Ephesians 6.11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And then he said, have your loins girt about with truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the preparation of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, and praying always, praying always. And then Paul's going to have and had a great, and we're all going to have, excuse me, a great summons one day. Over there in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 18, the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. We're going to be summoned to the heavenly shore with the Lord Jesus Christ forever. We're soon to move out of here, and we're going from here to eternity. Our position spiritually has already been changed, but our position physically and literally shall soon be changed, and we'll see Him as He is and receive a glorified body like His own glorious body. We rejoice now with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Right now we can rejoice. But here's the thing, and I want to close out just mentioning why Paul thought Jesus was the greatest and why he knew it. It's because he was precious, he was perfect, he was sinless. He was God's only begotten Son. He was born of a virgin. He voluntarily became a man. He was and is God, always has been, always will be. He is called Lord, the highest name in the entire universe. The highest name that will ever be is Lord, exalted by the Father. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the creator of the entire universe. He can forgive sins of any and all kind. All sin can forgive it. He can forgive it. Oh, my, we got to catch on to that. Because a lot of people think, they seem to think that he cannot forgive certain sins. He'll forgive of every sin. The blood of Jesus cleanses from all sin. And then he died for sinners like you and me. You know, I know I'm not worthy to go to heaven. I know that. I know what Sammy K is. He's a good for nothing. But I'm glad I belong to somebody that is something. I'm glad he's mine. And then he's the supreme judge. Won't be these crooked judges we've got in the United States of America. No, the crooked judges out there, they're going to be shamed one day when they stand before that supreme judge. But they're going to be judged. And boy, it's going to be a terrible day for them for lying and cheating and stealing and making money and doing wrong things. And a lot of them are out there like that. Not all of them, but some of them. And then he is omnipotent. He is omniscient. He is omnipresent. He is omnisapient. And he is immutable. He never changes. He'll always be that God. He is the living word. He is the head of the church. And he will return according to his promise. Why should we follow Paul's teachings here? Because he proclaimed the greatness of Jesus. That's the main thing. And then all these other things are benefits from just giving Jesus the preeminence, letting Jesus be Lord of our life. Now, you know, it's hard to let Jesus be Lord of our life all the time because that means he would tell us everything to do, and we do it, and we'd obey him all the time. But we can keep coming back. Every time we fail, we keep coming back, not to get saved again, not to get saved over again, but to dedicate our life afresh and anew so we can maintain a fellowship with our God. So, brother, this is a good life to live. I'd rather serve Jesus than anything I know. I'd rather be in church tonight than the best place in this town. I'm telling you I would. It's a blessing to have this kind of testimony that this man of God had. And when he said, uh, follow me, he was talking about following him as he followed Christ. He said, do it my way. Timothy, tell him to do it the way I preach it in all churches. I don't go to this church and preach one thing, go to that church and preach another thing. I preach it in all churches. And so I don't, I, I've been preaching for 58 years somewhere along there, and I've never changed my I've learned some things, and I've learned some real things lately that would just absolutely upset a lot of people if I ever preached it that I didn't know. 
They didn't teach me. They taught me contrary to what I've learned. So I just stood in this book, and I mean digging into it. And I've learned some things that even the independent Baptists, some of the best, missed it. They missed it. But I don't know what to do. I don't want to split our church or anything like that. But I want you to know, brother, there's some things in here that people did not pick up on down through the years. You pray for me, will you? Church, will you say amen to that? You'll pray that God will lead me in what he'd have me to do the rest of my life. I don't have too much longer here, I know. But, praise God, I want to finish up doing his will. Stand to your feet, if you will, please. And if there's anybody here tonight lost, the altar's open, the Bible's here. We'll show you how to be saved. You can leave here saved by the grace of God. And if you're wanting to come pray for anything, you're able to do that. Remember the prayer list and remember Sunday school, Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Our Heavenly Father, we bow before Thee tonight. Lord, we are so thankful for all the good blessings that God has given to us. Lord, we thank You for Jesus most of all. Our Heavenly Father, our, our great Savior, the Lord Jesus, and our great Comforter, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity. Nobody can fathom the Trinity. Nobody. But Lord, we believe because your word teaches it. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And it blesses